back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. It's the four o'clock block here on a given Monday. Exciting here on Think Tech. And we're doing restaurants Hawaii. We want to follow the restaurant industry because we know how important it is not only to our economy, but to our lifestyle and our culture here, here in Hawaii. You know, we've been known to have great restaurants and a great diversity of restaurants. And a lot of people here, they need restaurants. <laughs> they need them every day. It's the way they live and eat and all that and entertain themselves and do social connection in restaurants. So Cheryl, Cheryl, the executive director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. Cheryl, can you tell us a little bit about the association? So in case anybody forgot, they're reminded. And can you introduce Dave Douglas and Greg Ames to us today? Absolutely. The Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice of Hawaii's restaurants. We represent 3,600 restaurants on all islands. And so I'm excited to introduce two gentlemen today. Greg Ames, as you said, is the Vice President of Operations for TS Restaurants. And also Dave Douglas, who is the owner of Cafe, Cafe Maui. Are you, are you stuttering? <laughs> <laughs> you say Cafe, Cafe Maui, or was it Cafe Maui, or possibly Cafe, Cafe, Cafe Maui, or Cafe, Cafe Maui Maui? <laughs> take, it, take it away, Dave. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, there's a little story behind the Cafe Cafe. And when we purchased, we actually purchased the business. And I did not like the name. I did not like it at all. But I got to looking at our traction and the social media. And there was a little bit going on. And Google said, well, if you want to, um, if you want to change the name, you're going to have to start everything from scratch. And, you know, having uh, gone through Silicon Valley a few times, and knowing what it's like uh, and the challenges to get that traction and to develop a brand, I decided to just stay with Cafe Cafe. And uh, now we love it. It's, a, it's actually a name that it's, it's easy to remember, that's for sure. And yeah. uh, uh, I think the stuttering part's pretty funny, but it is true. It's just Cafe Cafe Maui. Funny enough, there's different places around the world that are called Cafe Cafe. And there's one fairly popular restaurant chain in Israel that, uh, that is... Cafe Cafe. And so uh, when we have Israelis come through, they kind of, they're a little surprised that we don't have the same look and feel and brand and drink selection that their Cafe yeah, Cafe. Maybe, maybe you ought to consider that. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> okay. Well, what, what, what's, your, what's your menu like? Uh, what's your operation like? What's your facilities like? Well, you know, Cafe Cafe is, is really more of a coffee. Um, we're big on coffee. And uh, I'm the vice president of the Maui Coffee Association. So we really want to represent Maui. Uh, we feel like Maui Coffee is one of these underrepresented uh, coffee islands of Hawaii. And everyone knows Kona. And sometimes what I do is, is kind of do a comparison that, that Maui is the Sonoma of Kona. Because everyone's heard of Napa Valley, but Sonoma is just right next door. And now people are really starting to hear about Sonoma and all the great wines that come out of there. And I think Maui is the same, in the same position that we have amazingly great coffee. Um, we've taken first place numerous times uh, in competitions in the state of Hawaii. And uh, as great as Kona is, we feel like we're right up there. So- you stay um, away from the Sonoma fires though. <laughs> right, yeah, we don't want any fires here. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, let's go to Greg, uh, TS uh, Restaurants. Um, t talk about that, would you? What kind of a restaurant is, how does it compare with uh, uh, coffee, coffee, and have you have you considered calling it TSTS? <laughs> no, no, we haven't uh, decided to make that switch. Um, you know, our our uh, our name of our corporation is because of the the Tebow and Saxton families, and two really special men, um, Sandy Saxton and and Rob Tebow. So um, messing with that, uh, that name is just not a starter with us. Um, you know, we are in a different boat from Dave. We have, we have large businesses, um, large footprints. And, uh, you know, we've been fortunate enough to be around for 43 years. So we're, we're playing in a different sandbox. Um, but we're but we're definitely appreciative of what Dave's doing in his organization and promoting uh, Maui and and the the, the local uh, agriculture here. I think that's very special. So we're um, we're definitely supportive of what Dave's doing, even though people may look at us uh, at us as competitors. I don't I don't see it that way. Well, uh, how many how many restaurants do you have? 
So we have four restaurants here on Maui. Um, we have Kimo's, Leilani's, Duke's, and the Hula Grill. I'm, I'm happy to say that we have three of the four open. And the uh, fourth will, will knock on every piece of wood I can find in my room. Um, the opening in the next uh, two days. Um, we have 13 restaurants company-wide, eight here in Hawaii, and then another five in California. Um, so we've been very blessed to have a um, long-term relationship with a bunch of different communities. Um, and I, I feel really fortunate to be a part of the organization that, and the community, that's for sure. What's, what's the secret sauce for TS? I mean, the restaurant business isn't easy, even in good times. Um, you can, you know, you can, you can fail any time. Uh, so how does TS do it? What, what's the secret sauce? How do they, how do they uh, keep going? Jay, it's culture all day long. Um, I think it was Peter Drucker. Um, culture eats, uh, what is it? Culture eats systems for breakfast. Uh, something like that, um, but our uh, our culture within our organization has always respected our employees, respected our communities, respected our vendors, um, really done all the right things for all the right reasons. I was very fortunate before um, Sandy Saxton's death to um, for him to become a, a mentor and a friend of mine. And prior to TS, I owned my own restaurants and I, I sold them and I told him on many occasions, if I had been as smart as you, I'd still be in business for myself. But um, they maybe, figured out that cost, Jay. Yeah, maybe the, the nonprofit video business. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe, who knows? It doesn't make any money at all. I want to, I want to be clear about that. So, <laughs> So how, how are you, uh, how are you doing? One of them you had to close because of COVID and now you're reopening. I mean, what, what's it been like for you? Um, frankly, Jay, we had to close all 13 restaurants. Um, and the restaurants here on Maui have been shuttered for almost seven months. Wow. Um, we've come back online um, one restaurant at a time. Uh, it's sad to say, but we had to lay off 700 employees on the oh, West of Maui. Wow, wow. And company-wide, it was over 2,000. Wow. Um, so it was, a, it was a major impact. Um, we're opening back up, and with the restrictions that are restrictions that are keeping our, our island healthy, I'm not trying to argue they aren't the right restrictions, um, but it has reduced volume of the restaurants. And when volume drops, um, you can't have the same amount of staff. So we're hiring back and we're hiring back as quickly as we can, but our need for the same staff and ability to bring them back in a way that allows us to have long-term longevity, it's just different now. And we're, we're looking forward to a time um, where we can make that 700 become a, a, a thing again, and hopefully more. Wow. I'm sure you've aged in the past year. Why do uh, I feel certain about that? <laughs> this last seven months has been the most, as far as business goes, has been the most difficult seven months of my, my business life. For, yeah, for understood. Sure, for sure. Well, I'm going to come back to you and get into the details in that. But Dave, uh, can can you compare your operation with uh, with Greg's? Uh, it's smaller, obviously. Not at um, all. No, no comparison. No comparison. Okay. <laughs> um, we're a tiny little cafe, and I'll tell you, you know, when uh, when we bought the place, it was really for for basically my retirement um, out of Silicon Valley. I had been there forever. Uh, right after they invented the wheel is when I um, went to Silicon Valley. And uh, so I've been there a long time. Right after the wheel, eh? And right after the wheel. You, you know, um, you, you, look, you look younger than your real age. What can I say? <laughs> but this really, um, this was supposed to be my retirement. And funny enough, I had never run a small business. I've run fairly large businesses uh, before, but nothing like a small outfit. I just jumped in with both feet 
didn't know anything about coffee. Um, but I'm passionate about anything I do. It doesn't matter if I'm, you know, laying sod. I get extremely passionate about it. Well, uh, and so you know, presumably you know about you know about computers and hardware and software and then systems and the like. A did little you, bit. Did yeah. you use that knowledge in order to uh, you know improve this restaurant operation? One hundred percent. I, if I had come into this without my thirty-five or whatever, however many years in Silicon Valley, and starting from an engineer working my way up through CEO, I would not have known what to do. The interesting thing about I think about a small shop, any business actually, is that it doesn't how, matter how small it is. It needs the exact same systems and the exact same um, management that a large business has. And we have our standard operating procedures and we document every single little tiny thing. I didn't think I was going to need to do that until I was about three months into it. And it was like, oh my gosh, I'm <laughs> where's my HR people? And But we literally, as soon as I realized that we really needed to have documentation and standard operating procedures, again, just went at it full tilt and started documenting everything. Um, and so, and then also strat strategically, it's really made a huge difference. I think just having some business experience under my belt, at least for me, um, really helped me uh, deal with and attack the, this COVID um, challenge that we had before us. And I may not have done everything, you know, 2020 is a great way to look back on things uh, with, you know, a 2020 vision is, is perfect, but I may not have done things exactly right, but one of the things I did do was just don't stand still. You know, evaluate, adapt, and overcome. Evaluate, adapt, and overcome. And Fault I just, and catch fire. If you stop, day. you catch fire. Yeah, stop, you catch fire. Exactly <laughs> right. Uh, or don't be a deer in the headlights. Don't be too shocked. You know, just um, yeah. just recognize it for what it is, and then. Uh, oh, do you have to close or cut back? Yeah, we we never closed. We stayed open every single day. Um, and, uh, and I'm a little stubborn in, in areas like that. It would have made more sense financially to shut down without a doubt, but I moved to Maui to be part of the community. And I realized right when things started going crazy, I remember on the 23rd of March when, and it was scary. Nobody knew anything about this crazy virus. It, they, it could have been H1N1. It, no one knew anything, but the staff was awesome. And they said, Hey, Let's let's try and let's try and keep things going and see what we can do. And on March the 23rd, I drove down Front Street. It was completely empty. It was very apocalyptic. It felt like it felt like a bomb had just gone off. And th there literally were no cars, no people on the street, no dogs running around, no cats, no birds. Or it was just crazy. It was so strange. And um, but but we stayed open, and then we stayed open another day, and then we were open at. Uh, you know, a couple of two or three, and people started you finding must, us. You must have drank a lot of coffee. <laughs> a little bit. What I really did, though, is I put signs everywhere, and it's not very pono to have done that. Um, in like in a, in normal days, I would never ever disrespect Old Town Lahaina by putting up signage that's that's not part of what what the county authorizes. But these were weird times, and we had to get the word out that we were open because people had no idea. They thought everything was closed. And so what happened was we became like a local watering hole and people would come and, and they would get their coffee and they would be like, thank you, thank you, thank you for being open. Oh my gosh. And we, I realized early on that, that what we were providing was a sense of normalcy because things were really crazy the first three to four weeks. I mean, make any changes? Scary. We did. We, we, at the cafe, we, um, uh, had it where people could come in and there was seating. We immediately moved everything to the front and we have this sliding door uh, or accordion door. We opened that up and just moved everything to the very front and uh, put away all of our uh, patio seating and just put the X's down and had it where people could line up. Um, we also implemented curbside pickup immediately. And then I did a, uh, basically a 48 hour no sleep uh, implementation of a mobile application and then we we connected that to a um, a text service. So basically, they could text the word coffee now to twenty one thousand. And if they did that, they would get a link, and then they could order their product, and it would be ready to go. And we would go out and do curbside pickup. So we did that within a matter of about seven to so eight. So those days. those things are largely permanent, eh? Yeah, and it it was funny. It was always on my list to do, 
Um, but it was always on, it seemed like it always fell to the back burner, fell to the back burner, fell to the back burner. And then when COVID hit, it was like, okay, <laughs> front burner. And yeah. so, um, so we got it, we got it done. And, and now we have this really great mobile app. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, you must've made some changes too, Greg, um, you know, over the Absolutely. closing and the I, opening. And, and now I'd like to know about the changes and how you see them unfolding or continuing uh, going forward. Oh, oh, absolutely. Um, what what we've realized as a company is we've had success for many, many years, and we're so grateful for it. What COVID and the shutdowns has um, caused that we put everything into hyperspeed. So we've been looking at contactless payment for five years. Well, it's done. We've been looking at virtual menus and now it's done. <laughs> um, there, there are so many things that would have, you know, the emphasis on takeout or on curbside service or a lot of those things that uh, Dave was, was talking about, they were important and they were things that we wanted to move forward. But all of a sudden, in six months, we did what may have taken four or five. Um, so yes, there have been a lot of changes. And they've happened very quickly. And I don't believe that our ability as a company to be nimble is going to go away. Being, being a nimble organization that can shift quickly when market conditions change is not going to go away for a company even that has you know 43 years of history and systems and all those other things and it's there's no way that anyone would have wanted this event to occur um, but if you want to look at creative destruction We've seen it in the last six months, and 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 we we as an industry are going to benefit from it as horrible as it's been. Yeah, well, you know, there's an interesting consciousness, you know, through this uh, adversity. Um, by the way, if you if you don't have a mobile app, uh, you know, to help you, you know, promote and, uh, and and do business, I can put you in touch with this programmer guy in Maui, who might be able to write up that app in 48 hours or less. Maybe less. <laughs> he may do it for a discounted price too. Whoop. <laughs> I think I might know that guy. <laughs> oh, my Lord. oh my gosh. <laughs> well, let me, let me get to the, uh, the, the core point of the show. And Cheryl, this is when you come in and explain it. We need to have incentives. We need to have incentives like special things to incentivize people to go out again because they're scared. They don't go out and they're not going to go out and, you know, in great numbers until, you know, we've dealt with COVID and there's a success story about the vaccine, which is not yet, even though there's news. Um, but, you know, what kind of things are we talking about? And then let's frame some questions to these guys about what they're doing and how we might incentivize our customers. Go ahead. Sure. So one of the things that we were talking about earlier, Jay, was the Hawaii restaurant card. And as you know, the Hawaii restaurant card was launched three weeks ago. So the stats three weeks ago was, um, I mean, I'm sorry, the stats as of Friday was basically $58 million has been loaded and $26 million has been spent. So how do businesses wow. incentivize those people with that $500 card to come into the restaurant. And sorry, Jay, you didn't get one. <laughs> so, so I'm, not, one I'm the, not going out just yet anyway, so. <laughs> and one of the things that um, Greg and I were talking about is how do they get more bang for their dollar? You know, because these people are the unemployed people, right? And so one of the things Greg's gonna talk about is how he really wanted them to maximize and get more value for their Hawaii restaurant card. So there's the Hawaii restaurant card, which is, as you know, the first time that's ever been implemented, something like this in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us how it works. What are the mechanics? Okay. How does the money get in there? How, how mm -hmm. does it get spent and so forth? 
So the Hawaii restaurant card is CARES funds. And I want to give a big, huge mahalo to Governor Ige, who allowed the restaurants to be able to be the beneficiary of the Hawaii restaurant card. So basically 160 million cards were sent out. So far, 105 have been, I mean, sorry, 116,000 have been sent out. 105 have been activated. So the CARES funds right now, what they're looking at is all of the CARES funds for the 58,000 has to be spent by the end of December. So instead of giving the, you know, giving it out in other programs, the governor approved it going to the restaurant industry. So um, Greg has a program that he's going to share about, which is how he's incentivizing these people with this $500 card that's CARES funds to now come to his restaurant. And then that way he can bring back his employees. He can now order from his suppliers. He can support the local farmers because as the restaurants get busier, now we can bring back that staff that Greg talked about laying off. And now it trickles down to the farmers and the suppliers and all of our vendors. And then now everybody now has more of a thriving industry, right? Yeah. What a great segue, Greg. Uh, why don't you talk about what you're doing with it? We, we see the, the restaurant card and the increased business in our industry is being a force multiplier from the restaurant to the, the fish monger to the, um, to the agricultural sector. And so what we've decided to do as a, a company is that anyone that comes in and pays with a restaurant card, we're going to give them a 20% discount on their bill. So if you have a, a restaurant card for $500, we now have increased the impact on that for the local economy by 20%. And, and we're, we're more than happy um, to take that, that small cut in order to continue to support not only the people that are unemployed and are in difficult situations, but also allow us to uh, support the, the fishermen and the, the farmers. And I'm, I'm really excited about that program. I, I, I feel like it's just such a positive for our entire island. Yeah, this is the kind of thing that uh, we have to do, we meaning the state, um, and for that matter, the federal government. We have to do this in order to grease the wheels, you know, get the economy going again, incentivize people to come back and uh, actually do more than they were doing before. I, I, for some people, I think this is going to increase their restaurant patronage even more than, you know, they were patronizing earlier. So, Dave, are you doing this too? And, and can you also talk about um, you know, what incentives you think would be appropriate to get things going at a, at a higher rate than before even? Yeah, we, um, we are doing something. We actually have a 15% comma INA that we've been holding in place no matter what. And, and funny enough, there were folks who might be stuck on Maui. They're not really comma INA, but they may be stuck in quarantine. And this was back, you know, whatever. And I would say, oh, or, you know, are you comma INA? And they'd be say, comma, huh? And I would say, well, you're here with this, you're riding the storm out, we're just gonna give you comma Ina. So it really got out that we just across the board was giving everybody 15% discount. Um, didn't really matter if, if, they're, if they're on island and they're struggling with us and suffering and all that, um, we just gave that discount. And one of the things that, and this is a little different and I don't know if it um, was more of a, a, a karma or <laughs> I'm not really sure exactly how I can articulate what I'm seeing with the restaurant card, the, the local folks that we've been serving since day one, um, they are so happy to come and spend money at the cafe and, and they're tipping like crazy. And I'm saying, you don't need to do that. You don't, you don't need, don't tip that much. And they're like, no, no, Silas is awesome. Daisy's been great. Courtney. And they're, they'll, they'll just say, we want to help. We want to help. And, and so it's a little different. It's almost like, the restaurant card is a way for the local folks to show us we love you, thank you for staying open. So that that's really meant a lot to me because I know um, 
over the past seven months, we've made a huge connection with the local local community, much deeper than I had envisaged at all. I knew that, that we were gonna get a little closer and that's why I was there every single day. Um, but but that's happened too. So the other thing that, that we're kind of looking at doing is we knew that for some folks it was gonna be really difficult to get out. Uh, they may be quarantined. Um, they may be in a position where they really don't want to, to get out. They may be vulnerable. And so we went out and bought a, a delivery tricycle and we started doing local delivery um, you know, on the track, and I've done a ton. I've, I've, that's how I'm trying to keep my little hamster shaped body uh, yeah. in check. And well, some guys will do to stay in shape. Right? <laughs> but this trike has really been kind of cool. And people see it, you know, we went out and got it wrapped with our old Lahaina coffee brand, and uh, they know we're Cafe Cafe. And we're tooling around uh, Old Town Lahaina in the flat section. The, trying to get up Lahaina Luna up the hill is a little tough for us. But um, but we're doing local delivery and that's that's kind of making a huge difference too. I, I hope think. you have a big sign on the on the bicycle that you can. We do. It's yeah, huge. I figured that, yeah. <laughs> so what hap what happens, Cheryl, when uh, the CARES money runs out? You know, this is one tranche uh, you got. That's right. uh, wonderful. And you got to give credit to the governor for that. It was a creative move because he had to spend the money before the end of the year. Exactly. Or it would have, you know, reverted back to the federal government. <laughs> so uh, what happens after it runs out? Because this is obviously, uh, according to these guys, um, it's been a great, a great thing for, you know, facilitating and attracting people back to restaurants. But um, is, is it enough? Is it enough after January? Is it enough when there's nothing left at the, you know, in, the, in the card? So the card will expire on the 15th of December. And once the card expires, we're hoping then the holiday spendings will kick in, right? Because people are out there shopping and everything else. We're concerned come January, February, as you know, normally that's when sales drop anyway. So we are very concerned, but we just want to give a shout out to the local people, Jay, because it's the local people. And I'm going to start just like they, <laughs> the local people that kept our restaurants open when we had no tourism. It's our local people that kept Cafe Cafe and TS restaurants going when we had no tourism, Jay. So now they're coming back. And so we welcome everyone to come back again. Does she <laughs> care or what? <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, Greg, what are you going to do after January? Uh, you, got, you got a replacement system in, you know, in mind. Um, uh, what, what's the plan? When the CARES money, the, you know, the <laughs> tranche of money, that went into the restaurant card runs out. You're gonna have to right. think of something else. What what is it going to be, if anything? I mean, uh, Cheryl suggests that maybe when you get to that point, yes. there'll be enough activity, enough action. Uh, you won't need anything else. But what what do you have in mind to deal with that with the, at the end of the card, so to speak? Well, you know, we're we're really hoping that one, the visitor industry continues to pick up, and two we're continuing to hope that our high standards and high levels of communication with our guests about what we're doing to keep them safe is going to continue to drive traffic. Um, you know, we've been so for fortunate to have great loyalty and we're so thankful for our, our successes. Um, however, we need to continue the responsible behavior and safety, safety, safety. Um, so I, I, I feel very confident in Maui's ability to weather this. Um, this is the most challenging time I think that Maui's ever had from a business perspective. Um, but I feel like the, the organizations that are doing the right thing and that are doubling down on the, the initiatives that will make our, our visitors and our local clientele feel comfortable coming into our restaurants is going to be the key to making sure that we're all successful. Um, this is hard and, and there's no way that you can get ahead of a global pandemic um, you know, through business practices, but you can definitely make the best choices that you can and pivot like David, Dave um, referenced earlier, 
um, when things don't work out. So um, that that's my hope is that is that we can we can all work through this as a as an island. Yeah, well, that you know that uh, just uh, comes to mind. You know, in the late nineteenth century, Maui, uh, Front Street, Lahaina, whatnot. Um, they had bubonic plague there, and it terrified people. And although, you know, we don't have details of exactly how that affected business and merchants and restaurants, I'm sure it did. And the point I would make and ask you about um, is that this isn't the last pandemic. This, this is likely to happen again. So what you learn here and now in the way of uh, holding on to the business and connecting with people and um, somehow facilitating, you know, the restaurant industry uh, those lessons will be useful even after this pandemic has been suppressed. Yeah. I hate to use the word suppress right now. It doesn't sound like <laughs> a, a good word. Thoughts about that? What are your comments about that? Absolutely. We are looking toward the next issue that may arrive. Um, it, it's, it's a shame that we're in this position, but to not take advantage of this situation and figure out a way that we can better prepare ourselves for the next would just be a, such a missed opportunity. I hate to call it an opportunity even, uh, <laughs> <laughs> before, um, but you're right, Jay, we are going to have future issues we need to deal with and we need to um, be prepared for the next one. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, but we, uh, at the end of the day, we need our restaurant industry. It is part of our lives. It's, it's an extension of our own homes. Uh, so Dave, what do you got to add to that? Well, I think um, one of the things is, as Greg was talking, looking after the card, you know, once the card is over, uh, that was the very first thing I thought about when I heard that it was coming out. It's like, well, it's only going to be for a short time. So we're using that card as an opportunity to, to really reach out and connect with the folks that are, that are coming who may only been to the cafe a few times. And we're doing um, in the industry, it would be called a deep CRM. So customer relationship management, it's not platform based. It's not you know like going out to Salesforce and doing all these various high tech platform. We just have a little note and, and pad and paper. And it's pretty typical for a coffee shop to know the person's name and their coffee. I mean, you, that's kind of basic. But what I have worked with the staff on and what we're actively doing is finding out what's happening in their everyday life. Their kid is just starting up school. They're, you know, they, they're heading over to wherever they, to catch you know, some special waves that are coming in because of a soft swell. But we're really finding out about what's happening with, I'll just use these names um, random um, to protect the innocent, but what is Jay up to? What is Fred up to? What's Cindy doing? and really understanding what's happening in their life. And when they come back, hey, how did everything go? Did the sure. recital go okay? And it's not, it, we really care. It's not that we're just manipulating. We really, truly care about what's oh, happening. You want to be part of their family or an extension yeah. of their home. It's yeah, like and the, so that's like a the, deep, the British deep pub, you know? Uh, it, it, people yeah. are as, as likely to go to the pub as they are to eat in the kitchen. We're out of time. You. Cheryl, you get, a, you get the closing word on this, and I, I hope you recovered from your emotional reaction by now. Uh, <laughs> we really appreciate it. And yeah. now you can tell us how you really feel and close on the show. We want to thank Jay Fidel and Think Tech again, Hawaii. Again, you know, the restaurants really need our local people to support by going out and enjoying. We were looking forward to dining with you again. So we also wanna welcome all of our visitors back. We are ready to welcome our visitors back, come back and visit us, and we look forward to dining with everyone again. Thank you, Cheryl Matsuoka, Greg Ames, Dave Douglas. Thank well, you. you guys are great. Thank you so Thank much you. and all the best in these difficult times. Aloha. Thank you.